Hello everyone, let's go ahead and start. So, welcome everyone, I hope you can hear me okay. Uh, I'm very flattered that so many of you have came to this, this session. I'm glad that you're doing this because we're gonna be talking about why so many different data products fail and more importantly, how we're going to prevent it from you from failing. So this is very important. I hope that's why you're here. I don't want to fail. I don't want you to fail. Let's talk about how we do this. So if you were to walk around the floor, if you were to look around the internet, what are people saying is the reason for failure? They say, you use Snowflake and you should have used Databricks. They are saying, you should have, you did a data lake, you should have done something else. You should have done a data swamp. You should have done this or that. Or you used the wrong programming language. You use Java instead of Python. You use Rust. Are these the reasons that people fail? Do you think so? No. These aren't the reasons people fail. This is, can be a portion of it. I would say that these are problems that come out of the problems that we're going to talk about. These are people problems. Your people chose the wrong thing. The people chose this. But there is a problem that's before that. So. Have you ever seen this metric? 85% of big data projects fail. Who is excited to do a data project with 85% failure rates? Come on, go ahead and raise your hands. I'm excited. Let's. No, nobody's excited about those odds. Those are long odds. This is really terrible. I, I, I wouldn't do a project. I wouldn't say, hey, let's go do 10 million. Let's go put 10 million pounds, 10 million euros on this and see what happens. So, the question, it, it brings up two questions. Why can't companies do this? And why can't we create more value? This is a question. I've seen this for many years, and I've been wondering, wondering about it, researching it, and trying to figure out why. And it's because most companies focus on technology. They focus on technology as the single reason or the single thing that is going to be our success or failure. What's important to realize out of this, and if there's one thing that you take out of my entire talk is that Technology is one piece of the puzzle. It's an important piece, but it is not the only piece. The much bigger parts are the ones that we're going to talk about. It's companies that go in and say, my path to success is to put Snowflake in place. My path to success is Databricks. That's one small piece. You have to do several different things, and I really want you to take that away from my session. So we're going to talk about some questions. There are five questions I want you to answer, whether you're in the middle of a data project, you're about to start a data project, go back and answer these questions. You should have answers for all five of these questions. If you're in the middle of a data project, I strongly advise you to go back and actually answer these questions. It, it will save you problems. So we're going to answer who, what, when, where, and how, okay? So who? How many people have really thought about the who of what they're trying to do? The right people at the right ratios. Who are the right people? What are the right ratios? This is an important question. So when we look at a data team, sometimes companies will think of data team means data scientists, or they think it's data analysts. Well, there's an important thing that we need to know is that data teams encompass several different people several different personalities all at once at the right ratios. We need data scientists, but if we have 10 data scientists to one data engineer, you know what happens? Problems. I have entire talks about this. There's a lot of problems. That's an entire failure prototype right there. If we don't have operations people, guess what? We put something together, we put it in production, but nobody cares for it. That's a big problem. So. Sometimes when I'm talking to board, I'm talking to C-level people, they say, Jesse, tell me, what is that one team that I need? I just, I only have budget for one, or I can only do one. What's the one that I need? So if you look at a, a diagram like this, this diagram like is showing you one of those teams is not more important than the others. We need data engineering just as much as we need data science, just as much as we need operations. If you don't have all three in place, you create this broken triangle that inevitably causes a problem. No data engineering and having data scientists means that your, uh, your data product is engineered poorly. Data scientists, I don't know if you, I hope you're out there, uh, data scientists, you create terrible code. You create terribly engineered things. 
you need this team to keep you from doing terrible engineering. Guess what? Data science, you're there because you're going to create this cherry on top. Data engineers can't create these advanced models yet. You need these data scientists. And guess what? I, don't, I still don't trust data engineers with most production things. I say this as a software engineer myself, I, I'm just not good at it. I'm, <laughs> I would rather have somebody else do it. Somebody who's more careful. I'm kind of this bull in the china shop. We need these people to keep us in check. What? Our what is very important because we need to know what our business value is. How many of you could tell me a very clear in one sentence what the business value you're creating is? Anybody? Nobody? Okay, that's a problem because we need to be able to say what our business value. How many of you would, uh, is your strategy or, or your value saying we're going to do AI? So when your CEO says the business value, our strategy, the what we're going to do is AI. We're going to be generative AI. And just saying you want generative AI or AI, it's, it's not enough. You need to have clear, actionable steps, clear goals. If you don't have that, you are not going to succeed. You are not going to create anything because you don't have a, a clear, attainable business value. So here we are, we're in the data strategy theater and I'm wondering if the data strategy that's out there is, is AI or our data strategy is Spark. That isn't a data strategy. This is, we need a clear path, a plan and execution of what we are going to do with our data, how and why, and what that is going to do for our business. Very clear. If we, if we lack this clear clarity, we will not be able to, to achieve this. When? When are we going to do it? So you may be sitting there and you have a Gantt chart in place. You have some sort of waterfall. You have something in place that's saying, here is the timeline. When are you going to generate value? So I, I don't know about you, but in my career, there is always this pushback, this give and take of, oh, you need a year? Okay, well, you can have six months. So guess what? You then try to figure out, how do I do this in six months? And it puts you on a death march, quite frankly. So you set your team on this thing that's unattainable, and so you're always behind the eight ball. You're always behind in that project because you did need a year. You acquiescing and saying six months, it just put the team behind. It was really bad for the team. And then, so we have that of way too soon, way too, uh, way, way too fast, unattainable. And then we have all this on this other side, when it's ready. I've had a few people, uh, companies do that, where they got so much buy-in, they said, okay, we'll tell you once we're ready. Guess what? That's even just as bad, because uh, how many of you have been waiting for Half-Life for a while? No gamers out there? A few of you? Okay, Half-Life is this game that says when it's ready. Guess what? When it's ready, when your data product is ready, you could go forever at that. So we need to have this balance. We need to be able to say, hey, there is some value, I'm going to generate this. And what I suggest is trying to break down these products, these data products, these projects, into smaller, more deliverable pieces so that there is a lot of times of when there's things ready. There's drops along the way. And you want drops along the way because if at the very end the business gets this thing, we do it kind of waterfall style, we give the business this thing, guess what? That thing that we deliver at the end, if we didn't work with the business really well, we could have two years of work, three years of work that isn't what the business wanted. I've talked to many of you at the, over this course and I've hit several in, in the, my consulting as well. This is what's happened. What the, uh, as I talked to the data analysts and the business, they said, oh yeah, the, they took a while, they gave us this thing, wasn't what we wanted, wasn't usable. It was because they waited till the very end to get something out. When is very important because we need to get ready, we need to get things out so projects that take too long, uh, guess what? Uh, if you haven't noticed, the economy is not as great as it used to be. And so what will happen is sometimes you got this promise of when it's ready, or you got this promise from the board that says, oh, you can get a year. And then the economic headwinds hit and you say, well, you have six months now. You should make sure that you can 
be flexible that you're hitting these things. Don't take too long because these will get fit, these projects will get canceled otherwise. So be very careful. Where? Where are you going to do this? Are you going to do this? And where is this data going to be processed? Where is this data going to be stored? Is this going to be on-prem? Is this going to be cloud? Is this going to be which technology? You need to have clear answers for this, but it's also important to know uh, and to understand what the business wants before you make this. You, but you do need to have a very clear data architecture in place. If, if you're growing organically, the organic growth of architecture is one of the worst ways to do this because you will start to ad hoc these technologies. Sometimes it's a technology looking for a solution. You've probably heard that saying before. It's a, it's a technology in search of a, of a requirement. So that license fee that you paid early on, maybe not even necessary, maybe not even useful. So what you want is you need to have a very clear plan at each one of these points of what you need what you're trying to deliver. Uh, how many of you have ever been shown a cloud vendor or a technology vendor and they said, go do this? Any of you? A few hands raised. Guess what? May or may not be the right way to do things because that was what they were trying to do. When you talk to a vendor, are they, they're, they're usually not um, excited about displaying or even talking about competitor products. Here is where we fit. If you've ever seen a vendor diagram, it says, we do everything. You don't need to go outside of our ecosystem, pay us all that money, and we will allow you to do that. So you may be smiling about this, but I've hit way too many architects who won't admit it, but I say, no, I, I recognize that. That's an AWS diagram. Nothing wrong with AWS, but you didn't put the thought into this. You didn't ask the right questions. You didn't think through this enough to make your own plan. If you are sitting there and you have somebody who's followed that, more than likely there are technology choices that are incorrect in there. So be very careful. How? How are you going to execute this plan? We need a clear plan. We need to, we need to have a plan of what we're going to execute. And when I talk about a clear plan, sometimes teams, especially new teams, don't understand how difficult this is. This is one of the most complex things that a team can do. I say uh, large data, big data is 10 times more complex than small data. So it's really important to understand these step functions that happen. So when we have a focus or a, um, uh, an initial project plan, sometimes data teams will go 10 ways. They'll do 10, 10 key things that they're trying to do. That's way too many. So you will do 10 things slowly and what will happen is those 10 things going slowly will eventually get canceled because you're going too slow. What you really want to do is, I, I strongly recommend, a focus of one to three things. Get it down to one to three things that are doable in the time frame, doable by the team, and doable in, by the, with the technologies. And if you can do that, then what will happen is you'll build on that. You'll get this velocity, you'll get an acceleration that companies may not have had. So if you've ever read um, or heard a company use case or a case study where they're talking about this is our diagram and they show their architecture diagram and it's boxes everywhere. It's just this alphabet soup. Have you ever seen those? So the, the thing that they're not mentioning is that that alphabet soup came about little by little with this growth. They did this thing, then they did this thing and it got a little bit bigger. So if you are a company trying to replicate what Uber's done, what Netflix has done, you're going to have a problem because they grew organically. They grew little by little. Here you are trying to do it in all one fell swoop. You will fail that way. Focus. Do one to three, one to three things. Do that really well. Otherwise, you're going to go in way too many different directions at once and catch nothing. So focus, focus, focus. I can't stress this enough. And here's a bonus. Why? Why should you be doing this? Data in and of itself is interesting, but it's not valuable. If you could say all the data I have on my phone, I have a spreadsheet. Those pieces of data are not interesting. They're not valuable. So why is your data valuable? Have you answered that question? Just saying, uh, so I could do some AI on it, some LLM, some magic, that is not enough. 
you need to have a clear why. Why is your data valuable? And you need to identify this. So you might be thinking, as a tech person, I don't know how my data is valuable. You know who does? Your business people. If you are not working with your business people as you, as you go through this, as you work in these teams, you will not succeed. Your business people, as much as you may hate them, or they're annoying, or what have you, they will tell you what's valuable, what they need. And so they will help you understand this why. And you know what? That ROI, that return on investment that's so key for me, you know who, who can tell you that? Your business people. You can ask them this question of, if we do whatever feature you're asking for, create whatever data product you're asking for, you can ask them, what is the value of that? And then you can base that. So when I look at, in my consulting, when I look at uh, projects, I'm always looking for a minimum 5x, ideally a 10x or more ROI on that, where you, you ask them, okay, this, this project is going to cost a million pounds, I'm going to look for at least five to 10 million pounds of ROI on that. And that could be something like cost savings, that could be better optimization, that could be better cost, customer acquisition. There's a lot of different ways, and it may be additive. There may be several different things that add up in there. But in order to answer this question, you need to be touching the business in, in appropriate ways so the HR doesn't fire you. But touch your business, talk to your business. Data teams need to be talking and interacting with the business even more. So, now that you understand the questions, go back and actually think about this. Do you have the answers to these questions? If you don't have the answer to all these questions, I highly, highly recommend you go back and answer them because these will help you understand what you're trying to do and they will help you understand which uh, answers. If, if you're stuck at, should you use this technology, you can go back to these questions saying, do we understand the technology? Do we have the right people in place? There's a lot of questions that this helps us answer. It helps us move forward onto the execution part. Uh, one important part that I mentioned, you heard me talk about the importance of people. Data teams start with people. If you don't have the right people in place, you'll probably never be successful. It starts with people. So when you look at your gaps, sometimes companies will really focus on the gaps in technology. I am not using Spark. I am not using Snowflake, something like that. Well, guess what? Your people could be just as much of a gap in your, in, in your issue. So when we add in these new technologies, it's rarely, rarely just an addition. Usually there's a very specific organizational piece to it where you're having to add in knowledge to these people, perhaps new skills to these people, perhaps even people from outside, somebody with experience in these technologies. To think that you can do it all yourself is relatively foolhardy. It's very important that you look at the people, make an honest assessment, especially if you're in management, to say, do I have the right people? Do I have all the right people? Do all the right people have the right skills? Very important to think through that. So uh, now talking about help, should you get help? When should you get help? There's a lot of different types of help. You can look around the show floor. There's, uh, there, there's a company here that's uh, outsourcing people. There's, a company, there's companies here saying, I have technology. So lots of things that are out there. Outsourcing, consulting, management, consulting, you name it, it's out there. But one of the key points I want you to all take out of this, is these problems that I'm talking about do not solve themselves. This isn't a time heals all wounds sorts of, sort of thing. This is the teams that I talked to that didn't put specific effort into fixing these issues still have them years later. If until they put the effort in, and uh, probably a bonus thing that I don't mention here is, I strongly believe that this is a top-down thing. Uh, I'm not sure how many of you are individual contributors versus C-level management. I don't think that managers or individual contributors can really create this bubble up. I've seen people try, just doesn't work, I'm sorry. So for middle management, director level, line manager, they can get it done depending on the size company, but I believe it has to be a C-level, board level sort of focus in order for it to be done right. 
Uh, if you want to learn more about uh, some of the concepts that I've talked about, I have a book called Data Teams. You can go to datateams.io. Uh, a few things about the book. One of them is that I've tried to research this. I've tried to research this in great depth, and there is a lot of case studies at the, at the end of the, of the book where I didn't want you to just hear a bunch of what I'm saying. I wanted you to hear about what other people are saying. Uh, Bas Jurdink, he's one of the people I interviewed, and he's here at uh, Big Data London, so you can go ask him. But these case studies, I, I went through them and I talk and go through and say, here is the step functions. I really focus on those step functions. What, it, what, happens, what happens when we have our, our, our next level? And these step functions are pretty, pretty difficult. So be careful of those. And that's kind of what I talk about in those case studies. What are they? When do they happen? Sometimes it happens technology-wise. Sometimes it happens number of people-wise. Uh, when they go from seven to 20, for example, that's a step function in terms of how they had to change themselves organizationally. So um, I'm very proud of this, the work in the book. So with that, um, a big thank you, and I'd like to hear your questions for me. Thank you.